Hey guys, I am Nubkex and welcome to my guide for Li Ming in Heroes of the Storm. Uh, she's the second newest hero, uh, she's a ton of fun and uh, a very very powerful character even after her nerfs. So, uh, what I'm going to cover in this video is uh, her talents, a variety of talent builds and talent options that you can work into those builds. I'm going to cover her abilities, uh, her gameplay, her strengths and weaknesses, and roughly speaking what you're looking to do. As you can see, we've got a very interesting match in terms of team composition right here. I'll mention that in terms of uh, the talent build I'm going for in this game when we get to it. Um, but yeah, just uh, check it out. It's a really cool game. Uh, and one thing to watch out for, I'm going to go into the talent builds, in fact, right at the start. Um, but one thing to watch out for in terms of the gameplay that's going to be happening in the lane is I'm going to be trying to stay relatively safe and do some poke damage. I'm also going to be trying to do a lot of siege damage. This is something that Li Ming is very good at. Her ability to push waves is not amazing, but her ability to do damage to structures is phenomenally good. I think, in fact, if you're playing this now in the Zul patch, this was recorded about two or three days before the Zul patch. Uh, so Rhaegar is a little bit stronger, but apart from that, there's no big differences in terms of the game. Because I'm doing a lot of poke damage to Brightwing there. She unfortunately got hit by all my stuff. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, if, if you're playing with friends and you have Zul and Li Ming, you know, give those guys a go. Because Zul has fantastic pushing abilities, but he doesn't do a ton of structural damage. Whereas Li Ming doesn't push, like, she's got good push, but not amazing push. Whereas her siege damage is, or against structures, is phenomenally good. So I think the two together could be a, a pretty lethal combo, so try that out. All right, let's talk about the talent builds. So I'm going to cover kind of two two archetypes in terms of talent builds. I think they're the two probably most common builds at the moment. And then I'm going to talk about the other tiers and how you can switch things up and why and when you'd want to switch things up. So um, I think the, the big differences in builds come from either building into magic missiles, which is your Q, has a three second cooldown. And, uh, okay, it won't show up. Uh, you'll get to see me using it. you see me using it a bunch. There it is right there. They converge on the point of your cursor. They travel relatively slowly. Uh, they do, like, a, a decent amount of damage. And very short cooldown, very low mana cost. Uh, your W's Arcane Orb. That's the Arcane Orb right there. It travels out, it gets bigger as it goes, and it does more damage as it goes. So it's got a pretty long cooldown in 10 seconds. Uh, her E is Teleport. It's very short-ranged. It will jump. Uh, it doesn't do any damage, but it's cheap in terms of mana. It's got a very short cooldown. And then we'll get to heroics in a second. But basically, um, the first build, I think that was kind of the most popular at the start. I think it's actually a little bit situational, though. I wouldn't recommend it too much. Uh, fortunately, she decided, oh, Brightwing is coming in. That's why she went that way. Um, so the, uh, you can either go for a teleport build. And one of the big reasons for this is that there's a very attractive talent at level 13 called Illusionist which increases the range of your teleport, and if you lose more than 15% of your health at once, its cooldown is instantly refreshed. It can happen once every 4 seconds. So this can let you teleport uh, an awful lot more, and it can also let you teleport a lot further and jump over bigger obstacles. You know, her teleport range is relatively short well, without this talent, so you can't jump over a lot of walls in the game, so do be careful about that, but with this talent you can. And the reason that this is particularly attractive is because at level 7, you can get Calamity, which makes teleport do 300... Well, this is scaled to level 3 uh, right now. 328 damage at level 3. Bearing in mind we have about 1400. Uh, you know, this is a significant chunk of damage that this does. And then at level 16, you can pick up Diamond Skin. So whenever you teleport, you gain 20% of your max health as a shield. So what this lets you do is, with these three talents, is kind of teleport into people's faces, do a big chunk of damage, and yeah, then have a shield to kind of protect you, plus the reset on your teleport to potentially get out again, or else just uh, get a bunch of resets with your trait, which I haven't mentioned, I should have mentioned, in fact, which is critical mass. Whenever you get a takedown, so whenever an enemy hero dies that you have been, uh, you're, you're near, uh, all of your abilities will refresh, which is phenomenally good. It's very generous in terms of what triggers this, uh, what counts as a takedown. So, um, yeah, you get a lot of, a lot of resets. So the idea is that you can like, just be teleporting into the enemy's face, over and over again, getting this refreshing shield and doing a ton of burst damage with the teleport. That's the basic idea of the build. Um, the other options, and I think overall the better option, and I'll tell you why after I've explained what it is first, is to go for magic missiles. And this is you pick up Seeker at level 7. If three magic missiles hit the same target, the third one deals an additional 146 damage. So it's basically, uh, in effect, hitting them with an additional missile, because each one does 165. Um, so this is pretty solid. Obviously, it's going to be hard to hit a hero with all three missiles. You know, stuff can happen. You know, uh, a new Barak Beetles can get in the way. Uh, minions can get in the way. Uh, another hero can get in the way. Anything like that. You know, stuff can, can get in the way. So it's not too reliable at level 7 against that stuff. But at level 16, you do pick up Mirror Ball, which makes Magic Missile fire an additional two missiles. This makes it much easier to trigger a Seeker. 
So then, in, in terms of, once you hit level 16 and get Mirror of All, you get a huge damage increase. You know, that's a 66% damage increase straight up on your magic missiles. Uh, and then, additionally, you make it much easier to land secret. Then at level 13, you can pick up Glass Cannon. This is kind of like the opposite of a noob trap, right? So a noob trap is a talent that looks really good to a new player, but in fact isn't actually that strong. Something like Vampiric Strikes, you know, where, say, 15% of the your auto, your basic attack damage uh, is converted into health. It sounds really good, but it's not actually that good at all. Um, <laughs> well, this is the opposite of that. This probably sounds pretty bad, because it reduces your max health by 15%, increases your ability damage by 15%. It doesn't sound that good, but it actually is phenomenally strong. Li Ming has got one of the lowest <laughs> HP pools in the entire game. Uh, she's got very, very small HP pool. Uh, so, losing that max health isn't too bad. Usually, if you're in a situation where you might die, you'll probably die anyway, I feel. Um, whereas, you know, I'm 15% more damage. That's 15% more damage on your missiles, your arcane orb, and your heroic. It's, it adds up to an awful lot. Uh, so it's actually phenomenally good. I definitely recommend this. I think Cannoneer is good as well, and that's definitely an option, but I think Glass Cannon is just a bit more consistent damage overall when you're... You'll see once we hit uh, level 10 that we're going to be doing more stuff from range because we pick up Disintegrate, which is a very long range beam that you channel for 2.5 seconds. So, you know, 15% more damage on that is, is quite nice. Well, what, what situations would you choose, I suppose, to build the teleport build? What situations would you choose to build the magic missile build here? Well, the magic missile build is obviously a lot safer. Uh, you can work from range, which works well with your W. So W, you know, works better at range. It does more damage at range. Uh, and then Disintegrate has very long range as well. So the magic missile build also, magic missile is also very long range. Uh, it, it works very well with her base kit. You know, it, it makes a lot of sense. You can stay kind of safely in the back throwing out these long-range big chunks of damage, uh, staying safe with glass cannon, and yeah, just, just putting out a lot of damage. The teleport build, on the other hand, puts you in a much more risky position, but it does a lot more upfront burst, and also worth noting, it's a lot more powerful in terms of team fights uh, until level 16, because, well, you know, Seeker won't trigger too often in team fights until you get Mirror Ball. So Calamity it's a lot more damage in team fights, a lot more reliable damage in team fights up until that point. Um, the big disadvantage with this is obviously you put yourself in a, a very bad position. You're up close, making it kind of harder to hit some of your abilities. Your arcane orb does less damage. You're not really taking advantage of the long range of disintegrate too much. Uh, so it does have flaws in that sense. I think situations where you want to build teleport build are where your team has a lot of lockdown. So they've got good stuns, uh, good burst damage. So basically, you can jump in with your teleport, do a bunch of burst damage, and your team has got a good chance of you know cleaning up, picking up a kill, and then you get your reset with critical mass. As you can see, I'm getting resets here, and then you can, um, you know, you can kind of get your diamond skin reset and, and so on, kind of get out of there. So jump in, do the damage, and not be in too much danger. It's not good to do teleport build. Um, basically, where say the enemy, for example, in this game, it wouldn't be good. Uh, where the enemy's got quite a tanky front line, like Artanis, I'm unlikely to kill Artanis with Flamity. When am I ever going to be able to teleport in on top of any of these guys? Probably not. I'd be putting myself in a very risky situation. So it wouldn't be a good idea in this game. I'd be just making myself vulnerable, uh, and I'd be kind of stuck there. Uh, plus, uh, Illusionist would not really work in this, because Artanis, Illidan, Abathur... Uh, only Kelthus is the only one who probably hit me for 15% of my health at once. These guys all hit you for kind of small amounts, but uh, very repeatedly. As you can see, you did a ton of burst damage there to Brightwing, and the poison from Lunara actually finishes her off, which is very nice. She's throwing out the siege damage, doing an awful lot of siege damage. Uh, I'm being kind of aggressive with Disintegrate because it has a short cooldown. You can afford to use it for wave clear and to throw people down and so on. So I would recommend in most situations that you go for the Magic Missile build. It also works very nicely with, the, as you see, the other two talents I picked up at these earlier levels. And it gets a huge damage boost at level 16. I think at the moment it's the thing to go for. It works in the most team comps. Uh, it's the least fun. But you see we're here, we're in a little bit of trouble. You see Illidan is going to be kind of tearing through us. So I miss my stuff. I just decided I'm going to run. I'm just hoping I'll get away from Illidan. If he'd come for me there, I probably would have died. But... He went for the Rhaegar, and that let me just uh, sneak by <laughs> and the bottom. 
Um, but yeah, uh, let's talk about the other talent tiers and then uh, talk a bit more about her gameplay and so on. So a level one, really interesting. I think all of these are pretty good. I think Astral Presence, I'd expect to be buffed. It used to be when below 50% mana, they nerfed it to tw below 25% mana. It's now very weak. Uh, I think it's the weakest one. I expect this to be buffed to maybe 30, 35% mana, maybe even 40%, probably 35%. And I think that would be in a reasonable spot. Uh, Power Hungry is really nice, so regen orbs restore more mana. As you can see through this game, I have a lot of mana problems. Um, she, you know, it costs a lot of mana to use all of her abilities, especially with critical mass. Uh, so this is really nice. You know, it gives you a good, consistent uh, mana income. Not good on this map, obviously, because you don't get many mana orbs, regen orbs in the first place. But very strong on something like Garden uh, of Terror, where there are lots of orbs. Uh, also, the bonus ability power is obviously great. It's just to bear in mind that, you know, you have to be in a situation where you can use it. In fact, let me pause here for one second. So I think this is actually a bad call by our team right here. You can see they're pushing in really hard on our fort here. Uh, and we decide, my team decided they're going to go up. So I obviously follow them, playing with the team, uh, to try kind of catch them out of the fort. I was kind of thinking, though, as we we're leaving, look, we're not going to get there in time to stop this. What we should really do is kind of call their bluff and push in and take out the gate. The gate is really more uh, valuable than taking out the fort here, especially when the fort's like almost dead anyway, and there's very little we can do to stop them grabbing it. So I think the right call here would have been to push in, take the gate and pressure the keep and kind of force them to retreat and come to us. Uh, but this, I don't think it works out too badly, so it's fine. Um, force armor is probably my favorite thing. So whenever magic missiles damages an enemy hero, you gain spell block. So the next ability against you only does 50% damage. You can hold four charges. This gives you a lot, a lot more survivability. It's really, really good. I highly recommend this one. You can stack up to four. I think you can probably can barely see it. It'll be down right here where my cursor is. Right there. You can see when I get charges. Um, obviously, unlike spell block. So when spell block triggers, you're protected for three seconds from everything. This will only do a single ability. So for example, something like Disintegrate, which is doing like a whole bunch of little chunks of damage. Uh, really, really fast. We'll just tear through your force armor super fast as well. But it's really good against Kel'thas. You know, I was worried that Kel'thas, for example, might pick up Pyroblast. And in that case, force armor is phenomenally good because you can just uh, hit someone with magic missile and reduce 50% damage off that Pyroblast. It's fantastic. I think this is a really good level 1 thing. And you can kind of learn to play without the mana regen of Power Hungry. Though, of course, I don't know, it depends. You'll see that I do get quite low on mana quite often. You have to kind of time your Hearthstone uh, quite intelligently. I think Ether Walker is also really good. I think this is probably the least commonly taken thing. If you haven't taken damage in the last five seconds, teleport costs no mana. Its cooldowns decrease. I think, obviously, this is attractive uh, with the teleport build. One of the downfalls of the teleport build is that it's less mana efficient because you're spreading your damage across all, all of your abilities. Whereas going with the Magic Missiles build, your damage is kind of concentrated into just your Q, mostly. So you can function quite well on low mana, just throwing out your Qs. You still do quite a lot. At level 4, you've got some interesting options. Dominance is pretty cool. And this works better, I think, with a teleport build. I really like Charge Blast. So basic attacking a target recently hit by magic missiles is an extra 151 damage. So it's almost like hitting them with another missile again. It's, it's great. And you can see me, you have seen me, if you watch the gameplay back, using this throughout um, the game, basically to do some extra damage. It's really nice siege damage and a bit of extra wave clear, just to pop some of that extra damage on uh, on people with your basic attacks. And you'll have seen me trying to use it on heroes during the team fight as well, to just pop those little marks. You can see them. It's a little purple symbol that pops up on them. That's, you know, they've got a mark that you can trigger. I think it's really good. You know, it's an extra bit of damage, which is nice, whereas... None of the rest of these things directly increase your damage. Dominance is just a defensive thing. Triumvirate is okay, but again, that decreases your mana efficiency because you're using your ability more often. So you're just tearing through them, doing a whole bunch of damage right there with the resets. Ran out of mana, so I wasn't able to kill him, but we picked him off anyway. And now we're pushing in. Now, level 7, 13, and 16, I've explained them already. I think Disintegrate is generally the better heroic. I think Wave of Force is really good, so this knocks enemies away from an area and does deal some good damage too, though not obviously nowhere near as much as Disintegrate. This could be pretty nice against, say, I don't know, melee assassins. You could knock someone into your team, pick them off, or knock uh, heroes away. Definitely good options. Uh, generally speaking, Disintegrate's going to be better. You're probably picking Li Ming on your team for damage as opposed to... Um, picking her on your team for crowd control. You probably have other heroes that can do that. You can see here I'm just pushing for the core. Mirror Ball 
plus the last cannon, plus the Seeker, plus the Charge Blast, doing a ton of damage to their core. It really chunks it up and does a lot. And the game crashed. Oh dear. Okay, we're back. Uh, the game crashed right there. I think there's some bug with Observer Mode because we're playing on like an older patch. Tell you what, I'll just like speed this up. It was a short game anyway. Uh, while I cover just the, the end of what I was already saying. Uh, let me open up this again. Okay, here we go. So, where were we? I'm not even sure where we were, to be honest. <laughs> um, I haven't talked about level 20, so let's talk about level 20. Uh, you got some really good options here. I don't think Archon Pure Power is really worthwhile. Unless you picked up Wave of Force, then it could be pretty good, but yeah, I'm not too keen on this one. Not really, especially not with the Magic Missiles build, where you kind of want to be using Magic Missiles as opposed to Disintegrate all the time. Anyway, um, Talrash's Elements is obviously really nice. Your abilities get 10% bonus damage, as long as they aren't cast twice in a row. So this is pretty decent. I think it's pretty good. I think you could definitely go for it. It's obviously, I think it scales pretty well with Glass Cannon and everything. Um, the only disadvantage in terms of the Magic Missile build is that you might be spamming Magic Missiles a bunch in a row, but I still think it's good. I generally go for Temporal Flux, so Disintegrate slows enemies by 60%. That's a very, very big slow. Uh, just basically, when I would pick this over Talrashes is if you look at it and look at the team comps and say, okay, well, are slows going to mess up my enemies? Are they going to help up out my allies? For example, are my allies going to have trouble kind of sticking close to my enemies or escaping from them and so on? Um, so yeah, I think either one is a good option. Just basically, do I need more damage or do I want the utility? And generally speaking, I think the utility is better. Um, so yeah, and let's let's look at this team comp. Why did I go for the build I went for here? So I go for magic missiles. Uh, I go for the force armor, charge blast, seeker, um, disintegrate, glass cannon, mirror ball, and I would have gone for temporal probably gone mm, actually we didn't get there in this game I would have probably gone for actually Talrash's elements right here um, so the reason that I went for this particular build is if you look at um, you look at the team comps we got really really interesting team comps right here obviously ours is phenomenal Rhaegar is like a top healer Leeming's like top burst damage Lunara top sustained damage and then Cho'Gal again really good sustained damage and really good tanking and also mana free damage on this particular map where you can have quite long uh, kind of jewels and so so on happening here in the middle. Um, so we've got a really strong team comp. Now they have a really good team comp as well actually uh, between Brightwing, Illidan and Abathur. That's like the, the, the three combo right there. It's really strong and as you can see they actually put up quite a good fight. I think Kael'thas was a weakness. I don't think Kael'thas fits with their team comp at all and like he's just going to be stuck trying to fight Cho'Gal and he's really not good against Cho'Gal. Like if that had been a Falstad or a Rainer, something like that, it would have been a lot more intimidating. Uh, also, they're, they're very late game stacked right here. They do put up like a pretty good fight early game though. You can see they get level advantages using Abathur. They pick up the Mercs really well, they pick up the First Immortal, so they actually have a pretty good early game right here. Uh, and like they're obviously, yeah, with Abathur plus Illidan, they can just tear through the Mercs, pick them up really safely. Um, but yeah, late game is quite scary. Once he gets Zealot Charge, Artanis, he's going to start doing a ton of damage. He didn't. He actually picked up Suppression Pulse, which is a mistake. He should have picked up the laser. Like, he could zone out Lunar with the laser. But, like, if they just dive past uh, Cho'Gal, <laughs> or, like, an Abther clone zones us out or something, and they can finish off Cho'Gal with, like, Illidan with Giant Killer, yeah, it could be pretty scary. So it was pretty interesting in terms of team composition. Which, uh, like I mentioned, I think at the start of the video, or near the start, Illusionist wouldn't really work in this because Illusionist isn't going to trigger off Artanis or Illidan or Abathur, more than likely. So I decided not to go for that. I kind of was in a situation where I was saying, look, late game, if they want to kill me, they're going to kill me. There's pretty much nothing I can do if uh, Illidan and Artanis decide to dive our team with Abathur and Brightwing support. We're going to be in a pretty tough position. Luckily, our team, they kind of want to kill all of our heroes. We have like a bunch of high priority heroes. They would love to kill Rhaegar, they'd love to kill Lunar, they'd love to kill me. So I was kind of hoping that having a, a number of good targets would kind of make it tougher for them to deal with. So I decided to go just full damage. Um, Seeker is great against Immortals, right? So it's not good against heroes, but it's really good against structures, because it's really easy to hit structures, because they stand still. It's really good against bosses and Immortals, because they effectively stand still as well. It's great against mercenaries, they also pretty much stand still. And it's decent against minion waves, so not great. Also picked up Charge Blast as well to help with pushing and to help against just free damage. 
Again, these things don't give you any mana efficient damage, whereas this does more mana efficient damage against those. It also helped me uh, potentially hitting Artanis, because Artanis is relatively predictable in where he's going to move. So I could poten potentially hit him with some Seeker damage there. You can see I actually do hit quite a few Seeker, uh, or like big Magic Missile hits on Brightwing and on Kael'thas during this game. It's not something you can rely on though. Seeker, especially before Mirror Ball, it's just not reliable damage. I went for Disintegrate just to have some damage. Just try, try blow someone up. Like if we could blow up Brightwing or Illidan in a big, or Kael'thas in a big burst combo, that would be fantastic for us because, you know, if we kind of mess up our stuff, they could just go crazy. Again, knocking back Illidan's not going to help really because he could just run back in. <laughs> There's not much we can do about that. Again, I picked up Glass Cannon for that reason as well, just boost my damage. Picked up Mirror Ball, obviously, because of everything else I picked up. I think Diamond Skin would have been okay. But I think Mirror Ball is a smart uh, pick up here. And uh, yeah, then I would have picked up probably Talrash's Elements. Though Temporal Flux would not have been bad either. Would have helped uh, Lunara get some good damage in. And yeah, actually maybe I would have picked up Temporal Flux. Just I think both, both would be good choices. But yeah, there you go. Again, what you're trying to do with Li Ming, mana man management is a big deal. It's quite tricky. Um, and that's one reason I like this particular build, is that your magic missiles are very, very efficient in terms of doing damage. So it kind of helps you, even when you run out of mana, you can still put up a pretty good, good fight. Whereas with the teleport build, you need to be able to have the mana for teleport as well. You have to be very conscious of critical mass too in team fights, so you need to be keeping an eye out, like when are you going to get a takedown, and then like going in hard with a reset. I think you'll see it when we have the fight up here. Uh, I'll be able to use that fairly effectively. You can see like Illidan dives the back and there's not much we can do. <laughs> he actually swings back around. But yeah, like once he decided to go kind of hard on us right there, there was nothing we could really do about it. Like I'm not going to be good at killing Illidan. It's going to be quite hard for me to hit him because he's so mobile. <laughs> for example, just completely whiffing that right there. But yeah, um, basically I was just trying to try blow them up with the team. Kind of relying on the team and the team working well. And we did work really well together. Um, but yeah, be very conscious of critical mass when your abilities are going to refresh. And definitely as uh, Li Ming, you want to try like burst someone down in a big chunk with your like full combo and disintegrate. And then like do bear in mind, if you have the mana, keep an eye on your mana. You can like teleport forwards into disintegrate again. You could just like like do a couple of big combos in a row and throw out a ton of damage. And that can give you so much burst. It can make you very powerful throughout the team fight. And she's also a threat throughout the entire team fight as well. Because she can get these resets whenever someone dies, she goes back to basically, presuming you've got enough mana, she goes back to basically being at full power. Here you can see we made that, I think, a poor decision to uh, tr <laughs> trade here. Though it did work out again pretty well picking these guys off. Man, it's such a short game. We're already pretty much through it already. Just crazy. <laughs> uh, nice, actually, Ancestral. A little bit early, but just kind of helping me stay alive from Illidan. I backed up, basically forcing him to say, well, I kind of can't stay here right now. But you can see, like, they're doing a ton of damage to our team. They really kicked our ass in that fight. I did uh, have my Disintegrate blown quite early. It did come off cooldown again, but not early enough to make much difference. I decided to pick up the mercenaries here. Yeah, I think hopefully that gives you like a pretty good idea of how to play Li Ming. Again, it's much easier to play the Magic Missiles build because you are staying at range and disintegrate an Arcane Orb. Magic Missiles are just easier to use at range. Uh, the Teleport build is much more difficult. Obviously, you know, it's nice to have Illusionist and Diamond Skin, but if you teleport in and you get hit by like, say, Murden Stormbolt, followed up by like a Kael'thas Gravity Lapse, uh, <laughs> Illusionist and Diamond Skin won't save you. You are going to die. They're going to kill you. So definitely don't build Teleport. I used to actually Disintegrate on the boss here, uh, just because they were actually killing our boss very, very quickly, and I was getting a bit worried. It would be nice to have Disintegrate for this minion wave, but it's fine. I think I actually kind of wasted a lot of time here. should use Disintegrate just to burst these things down, and then just get over to the team fight quicker. I was being a little bit too patient, um, which was a bad idea. I should have been there sooner, but oh well. Um, yeah, uh, what was I saying? Goddamn, I forgot. <laughs> Uh, shite, I forget. Um, I already forget. Oh, I remember now, yeah. Again, teleport. Don't build teleport if they have a lot of burst damage and a lot of stuns and stuff. That's just going to kill you. So you see, I just teleport forward here a little bit. Pick them both off. Now it's out of mana. I couldn't do much to um, Artanis there, but team pick them off. 
that's pretty much game. And you can see just how much siege damage, even with low mana, just using that mirror ball plus all the damage that I'm able to do. I check out that. Boom. Just me. And my own. I think I'll do it to this tower as well. You can see like a big chunk of damage to the tower right there. Just like that. Trigger the last one. Big chunk of damage. And I'm just going to focus on the core here. I'm not going to bother probably trying to fight them. I don't have the mana to fight them. And the core is going down very, very quickly. So I figure, look, I do so much damage to the core. I can just focus that and potentially get it. I'm trying to dodge their abilities as best I can. The game's going to crash. Shite. Okay, the game is gone again. Oh, well. <laughs> Let's just end on the black screen here. You guys get the idea. That is Li Ming. I think she's really good. Definitely try out the Magic Missile build. If you haven't, I think it's really good. And there are lots of options you can go for as well if you want to switch it up. If you have a team comp that can pull off teleport build, it's great. Uh, just bear in mind that it won't work in every situation. Um, you know, you might just get killed. Or you might just be sitting there for the whole game going, Oh, I can't go in quite yet. Uh, it just doesn't feel safe to go in. I might get blown up. And then you just, like, don't do anything. Whereas with the Magic Missile build, you can be doing that consistent, solid poke damage for all that time. So, yeah. I think they both have their place. I think Magic Missiles is the better thing to go for. More often than not, but Teleport can be very good in the right situation. Uh, and there you go, guys. So hopefully that helps you. I think, you know, with little balance tweaks and so on, other talent builds could become viable. Uh, so just, like, you know, kind of apply the principles and the ideas I've thrown out here, like kind of staying at range of poking as opposed to going in with burst damage uh, and the, relying on resets. And just depending on, like, what heroes are popular at the time, however they tweak her talents in the future uh, or her damage and so on, uh, different things could change. But, um, yeah, I think... She's in a good spot right now, actually. She's strong, but she's in a good spot. And she's a lot of fun to play. And definitely a high skill cap hero trying to manage your mana and when you go back and when you can teleport in and when you need to teleport. Is it? She's a ton of fun. Give her a go. Try her out with Zul as well. I think they'd be a pretty nasty combo together. And uh, thank you for watching. Check out the other hero guides on the channel. I also have some gameplay and I do stream Heroes of the Storm about two to three days a week at the moment as well. So, yeah, you're very welcome to check that stuff out. And I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.